all the way to the bottom. Are you good? Wow, great Joe DiMaggio song. I saw a picture that you painted of Joe DiMaggio. We have with us now in the in the studio Margie Lawrence, a visual artist and a major Cubs fan. How yes. you doing? I I'm doing. You are? <laughs> yes. Michael did some good research on, uh, on the whole field of uh, painting baseball artists. I mean, uh, ba baseball artists and painting the... Uh, painting baseball. Painting baseball, yeah. You know, I... Uh, I met you at the Heartland Cafe a number of years ago, and you handed me a card. Uh, I probably gave you one of mine if I had printed them by then. <laughs> but uh, you just gave me a new one, but it has the same on one side. It's uh, Papa... Cool Papa Bell. Cool Papa Bell. And in his St. Louis uniform. I'm not beautiful. sure what the name of the team is. It's a beautiful, beautiful painting. painting. And on the other side, you have uh, the nemesis of the Brooklyn Dodgers, my favorite team growing up. But wearing a Brooklyn Dodgers outfit, you have uh, Casey Stingle. God bless you. And I, uh, I hung out on your website a whole bunch. Oh. Uh, you know, it's we're Margie Lawrence, Baseball and Blues. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, you have some wonderful paintings and you really have, uh, have really hit on some great events in baseball history. Tell us a little bit about how you got into baseball. Well, I grew up by the friendly confines, uh, 531 West Addison. Jeepers. And I went to school. Not too far from the police station, too. Oh, yeah, town hall. Been in and out of there a couple of times. Not me. I'm a good girl. Or, well, let's but, just say I don't get caught. There you go, Margie. Um, but I uh, went to school at Le Moyne. We could hear the ballpark. Le Moyne. By... At school, because it was a block away, mm -hmm. you know, and sometimes they... It was probably before air conditioning, so the windows would be open. Yeah, yeah, you could hear the organ, the crowd, the five people who were yeah, at the that would, that would make it very hard to concentrate on school when you're a kid. Well, you know, I was uh, in the first, second grade, so, you know, it was some... We weren't doing math yet, <laughs> but uh, sometimes they didn't come home, uh, go back to school after lunch. I bypass school, go into the ballpark. Mm -hmm. So you're younger than me, but I, I think we shared a time when you could go to the ballpark after a certain inning and get in for free. Oh yeah, in the bleachers. Oh, and there was Ladies' Day. Right, right. And I don't. Plus, if you flip the seats up after the game, you get a ticket for the next one. I know. Well, some yeah, people if you're a ten-year-old kid, sure. Yeah. <laughs> but if you're forty-five, they don't want you to do that. You know, one of the uh, one of the other things that I I found out about you that one of your baseball hero heroes is Jackie Roosevelt Robinson. Mm -hmm. And I got to say that he was my first hero. After Cowboys and Indians <laughs> and horses and stuff like that, it was Jackie Robinson and the Brooklyn Dodgers. And I went to my first Dodger game, I think in '48, and the oh, Cardinals yeah. were leading eight to nothing. The Dodgers came back nine to eight. God bless. It's pretty him. close to those numbers. I've tried to actually find the game online, but uh, Jackie Robinson was something else. I loved the the movie about him. Uh -huh. How did you come to love Jackie Robinson? Well, probably the same way you did, but I didn't get to see him. Um, I just, you know, I'm also a historian, and Jackie broke the color barrier before uh, Martin Luther King decided to boycott things in, in Memphis and such. Uh, he, back yeah, in the way day, before. when he was in the Army, he refused to sit in the back of the bus and got discharged from the Army. Yeah, he was one brave guy. He wouldn't go out and during the national anthem until a black man could be a manager in the major leagues. Love it, love it. You know, he took the knee way before anybody else did. Amen, Amen That's sister. right on, he Amen. did. <laughs> so before we go really down the incredible wormhole that is baseball, let's, let's uh, back up and find out how you learned to paint, girl. Because oh. you are one talented artist. Um, I taught myself. Uh-huh. My parents were artists. My mom was a major in art at UCLA. Oh, wow. My father was a well-known jewelry designer here in Chicago. So you came to it, honestly, family way. We are looking for recommendations on repairing jewelry. Katie has something to <laughs> bring that up. <laughs> the Wabash and Madison Avenue, you got 400 jewelers in two buildings. <laughs> that I can recommend. Thank you. <laughs> Back to your art. <laughs> Where'd you study? Um, I'm a theater major. Mm -hmm. um, I, I was an actress here in Chicago for 25 years. Where did you uh, pick that up? High school, college, whatever. Um, 
college. I have a father who wanted to be a stand-up comedian. <laughs> Don't we all? <laughs> I know, but he hung out with them and it was really bad. <laughs> Henny you, Youngman and him used to hang out and it was loud. You have an event coming up. <laughs> oh, yes. You have a, a, a show called uh, Marty Lawrence's Blue, Baseball and Blues Portraits. Yes. And tell us a little bit about that because I'm looking at a picture of, uh, as again, a lot of Cubs. And then you have a picture of. Uh, Looks like Freddie Dixon. No, it's John Lee Hooker. John Lee oh, Hooker. Yes. It looks, actually, if I had glasses, it does look more like John Lee Hooker. Thank you, thank and, you. And I'm sure, Michael, you like the car in the background. 59 I do. Lincoln. Beautiful. Beautiful. Dig the fins. All right, so where's where's the event? When's your opening? Oh, uh, 2251 West Devon, second story studio above Carrie's Lounge. The only place for two miles where you can buy booze on Devon. Oh, good, uh, Ooh, good little know. fact of yeah. life there. Yeah, yeah, the place has been around for about 45 years. You so, know, I have never darkened the door, and it's right there in my oh, neighborhood. Oh, and it's got a great pool table, classic African mass all over the walls. It's like a, you, you're you outside, and you go inside, it's another world. I love it, I love it. So when do you open? March uh, 31st. 31st. Next Saturday. Yeah, it's known as Holy Saturday, but for me it's Holy Cow Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> Margie Lawrence, uh, who, are, uh, some you got your, me. <laughs> who are some of your influences? You know, I in uh, looking at your website and reading about you, then I started, uh, I pulled out a book I happened to remember I had called Diamonds Are Forever, Artists and Writers in Baseball. Oh yes, it's, I have that. It's a wonderful book. Oh, Photos, yeah. paintings, you know, stories, mm -hmm. writing. It's great. And then I uh, I did talk to my brother-in-law who's an artist, Steve Parton, and I, I did asked, good research on you. I asked about uh, uh, baseball artists and he, he said, well, he, he directed me to the covers of uh, The New Yorker. No. And we came up with uh, Saul Steinberg and Mark Ulrichson. Oh, yeah. And you know some of these guys. I know Mark. Uh -huh. Mark is a big Giants fan because he's out in San Francisco. Mm -hmm. And he, he like he's a big baseball fan of all cities. But, yeah, God, he, he gets those New Yorker covers. And Saul Steinberg, everybody knows him. You know, there's a, there's a lot of New Yorker covers with baseball on it, and I'm waiting for one that you do. Well, you you call them up, and uh, you call them up, and you know, I also call the Cubs because they don't know who I am. Oh yeah, they no. still don't know who you are. I've been sending them artwork. I've been nudging them for hey, ten years. Theo Epstein, go for it. Yeah, Passover's coming up. I know Theo, Theo likes Twin Peaks, the band. Maybe we'll try to get to him. I think I'm the my Seder. <laughs> on on uh, the other side of your card is a, a pretty tremendous picture of Frank Zappa. You, oh, I, his sister gave me that photo to work from. No so kidding. it's not just baseball and blues, it's baseball, blues, and rock and roll that you well, like Well, it's do. Frank Zappa. <laughs> limited <laughs> limited to Frank Zappa. I'm going to do more rock and roll. So, you know, it's just, oh my God, the Cubs just won the World Series a year and a half ago. I know. What's your I'm sorry, sex fan. No, no, I'm so, happy for we're, all we're, the Cubs we're, fans. I, we rooted for, you know, it's our it, town. It was a religious experience. I, I recognize that. I recognize that. You As know, a Sox fan, we had had ours in 2005. And Jerry Reinsdorf, I've never seen an owner cry. <laughs> well, I'm sure they have, but not on TV. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever painted Reinsdorf? I know you did Branch Rickey, who used to run the Dodgers. Well, because of Jackie. Yeah. Reinsdorf, he's a good guy. I haven't painted him yet. What is your medium? I mean, is it oil, acrylics? Do you mix it up? Well, like charcoal? I got a little pencil. That's cheap. And watercolors. <laughs> and when do, you, uh, when do you do most of your work? Are you a late night or early in the morning? When you, I'm awake. Uh, you drink you know, when you're awake? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sitting on the couch. <laughs> oh my and god, that just, is one of the best answers. Do you go <laughs> straight <laughs> forth? You just start. You sketch it out. You start filling it in, or do you uh, oh. do little sketches first? Well, and then... you know, good question, I, Michael. Well, well, thanks, Kate. <laughs> <laughs> I I actually scan the intraweb for photos. People send me photos because they know who I am. Mm -hmm. um, Somebody mind? sent me a naked picture of Joe DiMaggio. Have you painted that one yet? No, I just look at it. 
<laughs> was it before or after he was married to Marilyn Monroe? Before. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I want to see that. Have you done any minor league stuff? <coughs> no. See, no. I was just thinking, that, you know, like I, I was planning road trips and I start thinking where I can, you know, the, the mud hens in Toledo or wherever, and I just, I thought it'd probably be cool if, uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. to get some paintings of minor league guys on their way up. Well, I, I saw Anthony Rizzo when he was in Des Moines. I go, oh, this kid's going to places. Good for you. He came out of Parkland High School. I know, and I saw his speech, and it brought tears to my eyes. He's a good boy, and he's a good man. Yeah. Or in my family, a mensch. A mensch. We like that. Margie Lawrence, what a treat to meet you, to have you on the show, and to see your great work. So, oh, I, thanks. I've, I've always wanted to be on the radio. All right, yeah. well... I know, I heard you on uh, Kogan not not that long ago. Oh, and don't forget, I do blues artists. Well, I well, won't yeah. forget because we're all going to go to your opening Saturday, March thirty first, from three to nine p.m. at twenty two fifty one West Devon Avenue, Second, Second Story, Story Studio. Studio. Yes, free hot dogs. Above Carrie's Far Lounge. Out. Excellent. Can you get ketchup with those hot dogs, or are you really strict on this deal? No ketchup in my house. Just right on. Put it on your French fries, man. I had it on my eggs this morning. <laughs> oh, it's okay. There's some hot sauce on it, too. All right. Bless your heart. Hang out for the photo. Oh. And, yeah. uh, and uh, we'll... Uh, Lynn's giving me a ride home. Okay, then. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to go out to... You are listening to Live from the Heartland at WLUW 88.7 FM. Uh, check us out on youtube.com slash Heartland Media. I think we've got something from our next artist, we do. Aaron McDougall, who, Mc, I'm sorry, Aaron, Aaron McDougald, I think is yes. the way. Well, when she gets on here, we're going to see how you pronounce this Correctly. twisted spelling. That's, all right. Yeah, we're going to hear uh, <laughs> Don't Be on the Outside from her most recent album. Thank you, Lynn Orman. <laughs> 